Hey everyone, good morning. Nice to see some familiar faces or emoticons. Welcome, welcome. Let me know if you can hear me okay. I'm super excited to be here with Dan Shipper today. I know some of you were asking what the super organizers thing is. Um, so that is uh, Dan's newsletter, which I, I, it's an amazing newsletter. It's so much more than a newsletter. It's more like an online community. Um, and so he basically interviews the world's smartest people in productivity and kind of goes a bit behind the scenes and shows how they work. And so it's kind of fun to switch gears and put Dan behind the hot seat today. And he's gonna talk about his uh, novel writing process. Thank you so much, Dan, for being here today. Sure, thank you for having me. <laughs> awesome, so this is gonna be fun. I know we're gonna dive into the uh, novel writing process, but I know that uh, Dan has a lot of other ways that he's been using Notion too. So if there's other things, maybe if there's other time, uh, more time or kind of more questions, we can dive into other use cases. And if you've never been to an office hours before, um, use the ask a question area below so your questions don't get lost. And I'm gonna do my best to kind of keep an eye on those. There is a poll down below. We just like to see kind of what level people are at with Notion. And then also if you're already writing a novel right now, it's cool to see um, who's already in that process. So let us know. Uh, so Dan, maybe you could give us a little bit of background for anyone that doesn't know you and doesn't know about super organizers, kind of who is Dan Shipper? Sure, um, complicated question, <laughs> but I'll try, I'll do my best. Um, so I, I run the newsletter Super Organizers, uh, where we uh, interview the smartest people in the world uh, about how they organize what they know to do their best work. Um, so you've, you've been one of the interviewees, you actually had one of the top interviews I'd ever done. Um, Whoa! <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> uh, but yeah, people just, love Notion. <laughs> yeah, they do, they do love Notion. Uh, we just interview people who are really nerdy about productivity. A lot of them use Notion, but a lot of them use other, other types of tools about how they use those tools to get their work done. And we just go like super in depth into, uh, into their workflows. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, my background before that, uh, startup founder, I, I started a company called Firefly um, almost, almost 10 years ago now, maybe seven years ago now. Uh, ran it for a couple of years and then sold it to Pega, which is a big public enterprise software company. But the process of starting that company was like my my lead into productivity. It was like the thing that made me just like be like, oh, I need to figure out how to work better and work smarter and work faster and all that. You were pretty stuff. young when you did that too, weren't you? I was young. I was uh, I started in college. Um, yeah. Uh, so I ran that ran fi the Firefly business inside of Pega for a couple of years and then left and took some time off. And spent like two or three years like figuring out what I wanted to do when I grew up. Um, and uh, in that time, I started writing this book, which I'm now on my fourth draft of. Uh, it's a novel that I'm now on my fourth draft of. And that's kind of like where this whole novel writing process came from. But uh, so I basically write the book on the weekends and I'm, I write super organizers during the week. And that's kind of how, how my. So you do a uh, lot of writing. My, <laughs> my time breaks down. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot of writing. It's, I have words coming out of my ears. It's crazy. That's um, impressive. <laughs> One of the questions I do have for you is uh, like, I know you're familiar with a lot of tools. Like you use a lot of different tools. And I'm really curious. Um, obviously, Notion's not necessarily built for novel writing. But I'm really curious kind of why for you it's been the tool that you're using for this process. It's a good question. I've actually used a bunch of different ones. So I've used Evernote in the past. Uh, I, I've used this tool. This is like a kind of like really uh, niche productivity tool called Tinderbox. I've used Tinderbox for it too. Um, and I've, I really have stuck with, with Notion and I use Evernote like a tiny bit for it, but it's mostly all Notion. And the reason is because there's just so much you have to keep track of when you're writing a novel. Uh, there's like characters, there's plot ideas, there's like scenes, there's like all this stuff. And um, you need to really have like multiple levels of hierarchy in order to capture uh, all that stuff in a way that that makes sense. Um, yeah. And and also Notion lets you put different things in, in di like the same thing in different places. And sometimes like a an idea will will apply to a character, but it will also apply to a scene. And so you need to be able to kind of like cross link those things. Um, and yeah, Notion was just like the most logical choice for that. I am so curious to peek behind the scenes. So yeah, if you're if you're down, why don't you? <laughs> Open up your screen and we'll we'll dig in. Let's do it. It looks like my headphones may have disconnected. Uh, Are they? Yeah, that weird echo is. Yeah, you're getting echo again. Uh, I'm so sorry. Hold on one second. Sad. Figure out how to fix that. <laughs> Can you guys hear that weird echo too? Uh, yeah, I don't know why that it would have disconnected. Uh, is this any better? 
Testing, testing. Yeah, I think I think that's a little better. Well, let's give it a Fingers shot. <laughs> if it's bad, tell me, and I'll try to fi I'll try to fix it. Um, cool. Oh, someone said they can't hear anything. I don't know if he meant anything weird, like any funny business. No, I go oh, for them. Okay, it. we'll we'll try it. <laughs> Sounds great. Okay. Oh, maybe it's an internet. I'm going to click the share screen button and press allow. Cool. Let me know if you can see my screen. Oh, good. Yep. Oh, good. Yep. Good. Okay. So the book is called And Then the Sky Smiles. Uh, and it's a, uh, it's a middle grade novel. So it's for middle schoolers. Um, and it's about a kid who's being raised by his grandparents and his grandmother gets sick with Alzheimer's. Uh, it's set in a near future society. And um, this kid decides that if he solves a series of mysterious self-driving car accidents, he will get his grandmother into a study that will cure her Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you may be wondering what the connection is between uh, the self-driving car accidents and the Alzheimer's. Um, in this near future society, uh, cars are uh, driven by uh, these, these little chips called neurochips, and they're just basically intelligent computers. And um, uh, that's, how they, that's how they do the self-driving. And in this society, there is a doctor who is experimenting with implanting these neurochips into the brains of Alzheimer's patients to replace their lost brain function. Um, and so his grandmother is going to be in one of those studies. And uh, uh, what happens is these self-driving cars start to crash and the government basically locks down the, uh, the use of neurochips. So the study is put on pause. Uh, and so he, he decides that he has to uh, uh, basically figure out who's making the cars crash so that um, the study will be restarted again. Um, so I've been working on it for, I guess, like two years now, something like that. Um, and I'm on my fourth draft uh, and making, making slow but steady progress. I kind of like started out just being like, I had never really written fiction before. So it was a, it was a significant like learning process for me to even know how to write like a, a good scene. Um, but I'm four drafts in, so I wouldn't say I'm good yet, but I'm, I'm much better than where I started. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um, and for me, the like, uh, you know, this isn't necessarily specific to Notion, but the thing that like really worked for me was just um, just writing all the time. Um, so like, I I try I tried to write about a thousand words a day, and I didn't really care uh, very much about um, uh, how good the words were. I just like just churned out word like words words on words. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and that was like, that was really uh, important for me, I think, at the beginning to just like, go from beginning to end where I had like, a I had like a finished product, like I had a book, it sucked, but like I had I had one. Um, and uh, once I kind of got in the habit of that, and I was like, churning out words, and I could like, I knew that I could like write a, a finished thing, then I started to kind of go into, okay, like, how do I make this good? And that has been obviously like, it's its own project. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think there's like two phases of this, of, of this type of process. Like the first phase is just like getting into a habit of mm -hmm. producing stuff without thinking about how good it is and trying to finish stuff. And then once you, once you've done that, then like zoom further into like, how do I make it good? If I had to do it all over again, I think I would probably, um, I would probably write more short stories first because you can kind of like go from beginning to end um more quickly and you get more cycles uh but this is the way that i chose to do it so this is where i am does that make sense yeah that's yeah, awesome that's awesome um so I'm yeah, getting a little I'll, bit of an I'll, echo when i when i talk, talk, talk. okay so i'm gonna talk, i'm gonna keep quiet <laughs> okay great so i will i will do as much of the talking as i can um and hopefully i don't know why my headphones are doing this uh anyway so okay so uh into the novel writing setup um Obviously, it's called In the Sky Smiles. I have a couple of uh, major sections. Um, the first one is characters. And this obviously just like is a list of all my characters. And um, some of these are like more built out than others. Um, but like this one, for example, um, uh, there's like some, some cruft up here. But like, you know, I will like 
write out like what they think about and like what their background is and like, you know, all their physical attributes and like all that kind of stuff. Um, and that helps me um, just remember it so that I don't, um, uh, you know, I, I'm writing this on the weekends. So uh, it's often hard to remember exactly like where I was or, or what the character thinks or like all that kind of stuff. And so having a central place where I can kind of keep track of um, who the characters are and, and how they feel and all that kind of stuff uh, really helps um, helps me to like stay productive. Um, and uh, the next thing that I do is uh, I have like just a bunch of scene ideas in here. I honestly like don't use this one that much, but um, it's a, it's just like a good central repository when I think like I have like a, an idea that like that is good. I just like throw it in there and, and I like, I may go back to, to use it later. Similar, similar thing for like plot ideas. I haven't honestly used this in a while either, but it's, it's again, like a, um, just a repository of like, of interesting things that like, that could work for the plot. And then I have like a couple of like more fleshed out, like plot lines, uh, in, in separate pages, uh, here. Um, uh, another thing that I use a, a lot is like uh, essentially it's just like a, a list of free writes. And these are all just like, uh, you know, a lot of times I'll, I'll just like, I'll get an idea, like, here's a good one. So like, this is like uh, this, this feeling of coming out of quarantine. Um, I basically like uh, recently I, I saw my sister and I hadn't seen her in like a couple of months um, because obviously because of the pandemic or, or an, another example is I, I went to a coffee shop recently and I, there was this like feeling that I got uh, from seeing a like real human person in person for the first time. And like, there was this like really visceral feeling of like my face was burning and my cheeks were burning and, uh, and, and, my, and my hands were burning too. And it was like almost like the kind of feeling that you get when you're like really embarrassed or ashamed of something, ashamed about something. But I realized that it was joy. Um, and uh like my my brain and my heart were like melting in that moment and i don't know where i'm going to use that in this book or if i'm going to use it but um i like to collect those like little moments because i think that there could be a time when the main character experiences that i don't think he's going to be in quarantine but like experiences seeing someone that he loves for the first time in a long time um and uh, and having those those kinds of moments and those kinds of feelings and the details recorded somewhere helps me to like basically come back when I need to write something like that and just like just go for it. Um, and I have a couple. I have a bunch of other ones that are like this. Um, I wonder if I have anything that I should I can share. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, like this is an interesting moment. Like uh, there was some quote um, that was talking about we are celestial catch potatoes, yet we let what we lack in, in exploratory and the ability to explore will we make up for in other ways. We don't travel with our bodies, we travel with our mind. Um, and I just like love that idea that like you can use your mind to travel to places that you you physically can't ever go. Like we know a lot about this, this, the stars, but like we've no one has ever been there. Um, and so the theme of like going places in your mind and using science and math to like understand things that you can't actually touch is like super interesting and, and I think could be useful in the book that I'm writing. So I just like have it there. And when I'm um, sometimes when I'm bored or when I'm writing a scene, I'll like go through these and I'll often find a thing that um, that uh, uh, that relates to the thing that I'm writing about. And it helps me. It helps me write with like emotion and clarity and detail. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. That's awesome. I, love, that's I love, I love hearing the, hearing the process behind the scenes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so other things, um, one thing that I did here is I kind of like, what happens when you, um, when you write a book, especially some people are like outliners and they just like outline the entire thing before they write. And some people are, uh, they just like write and see where it goes. And I always wanted to be an outliner and I've written a bunch of outlines, but my, my problem is that like the outline never actually 
goes where I think it's going to, like when I start to write it, it never actually goes where it should go in the outline. Like it always goes somewhere else. So I've never successfully like written to an outline, even though I wish I could. And um, part of that is actually kind of cool because uh, writing a long-term project like a novel is, um, it's a really great way to understand what's going through your mind because everything that's going on in your life is probably going to be reflected in your novel. And if you're writing it over a long period of time, it means that this book will like capture uh, in a really detailed way, like all of the different like mind states that you're going through over, over the year or two years or three years or four years that you're writing it, which is like really kind of cool. But um, because you're often not writing it uh, with a like top down plan in mind, it's really important to basically like pull out the themes that come out of you so that you can then when you go back and like you're going through a revision process like um you can uh uh you can burnish those themes a little bit so like uh, one of the themes that comes out of this is memory um and the role of memory um in our lives because this this character like um has a grandmother that's losing her memory um and uh but i didn't like set out to write a book about memory it just kind of happened and what i do with this list is just like is pull out those things that are that are coming out often so that when i go back to revise i can i can revise a scene with the idea of memory in mind uh and uh and even for a scene that's not specifically about alzheimer's i can like hit on that theme if it makes sense um let's see what else uh, this is just a place where uh, I've gathered like a bunch of research, obviously. So um, one thing that I've been that I do is like I'm writing in a I'm writing in, in the first person, um, and I'm writing in the first person of like a kid, obviously, uh, who's like 11. So um, I'm not a kid anymore, uh, even though I have like a little a little bit of a kid in me, maybe hopefully. Um, but uh, uh, part of the challenge of writing writing uh, as a kid without being a kid is that you don't really necessarily remember how, how kids work. And um, so gathering these examples of like just childlike logic and childlike wonder helps me to like get back into like the way a kid might, might, um, might think. So like, for example, this is a, just a tweet from Casey Neistat that I like that I thought was really funny that uh, his daughter um, uh, calls the color of this, this Samsung phone unicorn um and that and she calls a question mark a mystery like i love that that's so like that's so kid like uh and this is like a this is a scene from a from a movie that i really like that's just a really funny example of a, of of how kids have how kids work um so uh yeah so this just it's another example of like how i um uh i, I guess i use notion to capture these like uh, little pieces of emotion or language that uh, could be useful to me uh, at different times. And this is this is another example. This is more like research based. Like part of this is like a technological novel, right? Like I have to write about like how self driving cars work and how they crash. Um, so I had to like do some research into like if you were going to make self driving cars crash, like how how would you do it? Um, and uh, so I, I gathered a lot of that research here um and let's see another thing that i do is um i just have a bunch of like lessons that i've learned um uh and i try to like these are very like this is kind of a small list but these are actually like just really important things that act like for example actions have consequences and stories that um maybe I could have told you before I started, but like now I like really like know what that means. And it's really important for me to basically be able to go back and, 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 and refer to this and say like, when I'm writing a scene, like, that, okay, the character did something like, what were the consequences of that action? Um, so this is just like a, a list of those like higher level lessons that I've taken out over the last couple of years. Um, and, uh, uh, uh one one other final thing that i that i do I, I have i have some like basically feedback and like planning docs for for the um uh for the next revision that i'm doing but one other final thing that i do is i, I and i do this in in all of my notions um i have what i call an archive and i have an inbox and an archive is like essentially like 
there are, I've created many more pages in this, but these are the ones that I use frequently. When I notice that I haven't been using a page in a while on a uh, inside of a particular page, I will just like throw it into archives so I don't have to worry about it. Uh, and that's a way for me to like keep this stuff like really, um, really clean so that the stuff here is like only stuff that I actually use. And you can do this in like at every level of every page is just have an archive because I never want to throw anything out, but I never, but I also don't want to see things that I know that I'm not going to use. So that's one little trick that I have. Another thing I do is I just have an inbox where like, again, I'm like gathering these like little pieces of inspiration. Um, and so I will just like date when I, when I saw it. So this is like a, this is a screenshot of a Reddit post and it's, uh, it, it's in the voice of someone um, claiming that they know how to divide by zero and, and that they like um, that they just haven't like showed shown the world yet how to divide by zero because uh, you know they're they're working out all the physical ramifications and obviously this person is like super grandiose and like has not figured out how to divide by zero um, but I thought it was like such an such a good example of that kind of voice and I thought I could use it for one of my characters so I just threw it in there and and essentially like this inbox is like a like another little form of like a list of inspiration but also it's like I just throw stuff in there before I'm ready to categorize this. Like eventually I'm going to just take this and throw it into one of the character docs. Um, and it's just like a quick way for me to do that. Um, so yeah, that's the, uh, that's the setup. I'm just going to test toggling your mic to make sure that the feedback doesn't. Okay. That works well. Um, I was also going to see Dan, if you're able to like maybe switch the input on your, um, on your mic in the browser when you're using Crowdcast, there should be like the camera and mic that you're using, if we can figure it out to minimize. Otherwise, I'll just have to like mute you and then <laughs> switch it off. But um, I love seeing behind the scenes. It sounds like you're actually using it more for research than for the actual writing itself. And so some great questions have popped in that I thought we could we could go through and I'll, um, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see if this sound thing, <laughs> if we can figure this out. Um, yeah, I know Echo because I'm actually muting Dan right now. Um, I'll, I'm gonna go through some of the questions and I'll unmute you and we'll see if we can make this work. Um, okay, so uh, Daniel asked, do you use Scrivener? And if so, how do you combine it with Notion? And let me unmute. Let's see if that, I think you're still, hang on a second. Uh, I'm sorry, I missed the question. Can you repeat it? Oh, uh, do you use Scrivener? And if so, how do you combine it with Notion? Ah, great question. Um, and I think I, I think I figured it out, by the way. I think the echo is gone. Um, it sounds good. So yeah. I, I've tried to use Scrivener. I have done it in the past. And Scrivener is really cool for the reason that you can basically like break up all your files and, uh, and just like work within one file that's a chapter file. And then um, uh, basically, it will like compile everything for you, so you can have like a cool looking book. And particularly for authors, it's like really fun to like press compile on your book, and then it like looks like a real book, and it's got like a PDF, got all the fonts, and like and all that kind of stuff. So, um, so I've used it in the past, but I stopped using it. Honestly, can't remember why. I think it's just like there's just too much stuff. It's like too complicated. I don't need all of it. Um, and uh, and a really big thing for me is um, basically like being able to like collaborate and share like share the document and like talk about it with people and whatever so i just use google docs and that's just like simple everyone can use it um and i i wrote a little like script that basically compiles all of my files into into it into a document so i like basically just like recreated the scrivener functionality and i'm happy to share that script with anyone if you want it <laughs> very cool uh it, yeah. something that you just said too it sounds like you actually do a lot of either collaboration or kind of reflection, like you're actually sharing these little bits as you go and getting that feedback. Is that, I'm yeah. curious, is that like, do most people do that? Or is that not everyone's as comfortable sharing their stuff? I don't think so. It's also, I'm not comfortable with it. I'm more comfortable now. Like when you first do it, it's like the most embarrassing, like hard thing to do in the world. Like it's, yeah. it's horrible. It's horrible. Um, <laughs> you're like, don't look, but and, look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but I think it's actually really important to do because like you're writing it for other people. Right. Um, and so getting other people's right. feedback early, early in the process is great. As long as you're doing it from a place where like, you're not going to be crushed if they have, if they have like, you know, comments, you know, you have to be in a, in a mental space where like you can, you can take it. <laughs> and you probably have to be um, quite discerning with who you're 
trusted people that, yeah. that you're yeah, sharing you it with. Do it with people that you trust, you know, like I'm really lucky. Like I, I, I gave the first couple drafts to, to a couple of friends, like my friend Alex Godin, who like, he was so nice about it. Like he was just so supportive. Like I oh. wrote, it was like, it was terrible, but he thought it was great. And like, that <laughs> was like the kind of thing that like I needed um, at first. And, and like only later did I like start sending in people that like might have some kind of like actual like critical feedback. I mean, he could give me critical feedback. He just like knows, he just knew not to do that, you know? Um, not the time. Like, the point, <laughs> later. The point was like to just be supportive. Yeah. But I, what I've actually done um, over the last year, which I think has been like really, really helpful for me is, um, is uh, there's a novelist that I just love uh, who, and I read his book and I thought he was amazing. Um, and I just emailed him and I was like, Hey, like, will you be my like novelist coach? Um, and he has, uh, done novel coaching, uh, be like a, a couple times a month. Uh, so he'll like read my stuff and then he will, um, uh, and then he'll give me feedback. And that's been like, really like leveled me up in a way that, uh, I, would not have been otherwise it's like kind of like i it's like a my own version of an, of an mfa program it's much cheaper than an mfa um, <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah that's really cool that's really cool oh the echo is back bummer oh maybe it's gone it's like coming in and out a little bit hopefully we'll it'll hold off um okay so homesick mac asked uh seeing how you put uh page into page all over again uh how do you navigate fast between them do you use the sidebar and the toggles there at first glance the setup seems like it involves a lot of mouse clicking it's a good point i generally just use command p because i know where i'm going yeah uh toran asked do you use databases to keep track of scenes you've done where they're set or what characters are involved because obviously what we saw was mostly pages do you ever use any of the database features when you're you're doing this sort of plotting sort of plotting um great question not really um i have this like inherent bias against databases usually i prefer just a, like a list of pages um because the pages just feel like more flexible and a database just feels like kind of like rigid to me somehow. Like if I'm going to use a database, like I'll, I will usually use like a, like I'll go and I'll use like a, like a sheet or something for like some, something that like I need to like actually do um, some sort of calculation on. Um, but for organizing stuff like this, pages feel like a little bit more illogical to me, even though there, there's like a lot of good reasons to use a database and it's, and it's, it's easier to automatically organize things and all that kind of stuff. It's just for whatever reason, it feels, it feels too rigid for me and I'd rather have all the pages. Fair enough. Okay. So Kate said, I would love that uh, to your script, by the way. So it sounds like some people would really like that script. Uh, and also what do you, what do you look for in a novelist coach? How do you find a novelist coach? How do you find a novelist coach? I just got lucky. I just like read his book and and emailed him and like he happened to like be open to doing that. Like you have to get you have to get people who are like kind of in this like they're they're really good at what they do but they're not yet famous, so they will still talk to you kind of face, you know, <laughs> which is like hard to, hard to do. Um uh so I don't necessarily I don't have a good system for it and and honestly like there is definitely a difference between someone who um uh, who knows how to write and someone who can teach how to write. And they're like two different mm. skills. Um, and, and even within the, the knowing how to teach someone how to write skill, there are just different types of writers. And like some, like, for example, there's the, the planner versus like the gardener, like the planner is like doing blueprints and the gardener is just like, kind of like growing stuff and seeing where it goes. And if you find a writer who's like a planner and you're a gardener, like it's going to be like a little bit hard to like have a, uh, have a good like working relationship. Um, so I just literally got lucky. Uh, I, if, if, if I were you, the way that I would probably do it is one, I know a lot of, um, a, a lot of like writer teaching programs, like have this type of thing. It's just like, it's just more expensive. Um, so like, for example, there's this thing called Gotham writers workshop. Um, and like, you can hire someone to like, to do this with you, like coaching and they're all like novelists and they, they'll, they'll get on the phone with you. It's just more expensive, but it's, it's a program. So you're more likely to have like a good outcome. Um, and the other, the other version is like, just take a class. Just ask. Um, <laughs> yeah. Or yeah, just ask. I also go find like, 
find a book that you really love and like email the writer and say like, will you be my coach or whatever? Um, or do you know someone who could, you know, you have to do it in a way that doesn't make them feel weird. Cause a lot of people like you, I wouldn't say like, will you read my novel? You know, like I wouldn't, I would not lead with that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Lead with an ask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, how do you use notion for plotting out both main plot and subplots? Not sure if we covered that in, uh, in your, in demo. your demo. Yeah, it's a good question. I don't, I honestly don't have like a good answer to that. I've done, I have, I've definitely done like more complicated systems in the past. Like, um, for example, I, I used to have this, like, I actually did it in Google docs, but you could do the same thing in notion. And I would like literally every scene, I would like have it in a, in a sheet. And, uh, then I would show which characters were in the scene and like, which, um, uh, like which plot it related to and like all that kind of stuff. And that was helpful for me at the beginning to like kind of understand the structure of what I was doing. And now I've just like kind of done away with those things and I'm writing much more by like feel. Oh, you're muted suddenly. Your mic is toggled off. What's he saying? <laughs> Do I need to untoggle that? <laughs> Standing by. Sorry, un unlucky audio day. Thanks for bearing with us, guys. Still nothing? Better? He's back. Working? Working, no echo. Yes. Yay. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm so sorry. I don't know, I don't know what's going on with my computer. Um, so um, basically, uh, <laughs> so I used to have a very complicated spreadsheet and I don't do that anymore. I now just kind of like write by feel uh, and I will, at like a certain point in my editing process, I may go back and like, and do that stuff, but I'm just not there with the book. I'm more, I'm more just like have to write more scenes. Um, and so the like really, really detailed like plot stuff is like, I, I'm not doing that as much. I'm literally just like writing. I have, I have a little page where I just like, this is, these are the next couple scenes I'm going to write and that's it. I also love the way you, um, I'm just going to mute you for like a quick, quick second while I say this. Um, one thing I really love, like the way that you pulled that information from Reddit and just these little clips of other people, like you just are making so many insights, journal entries about real life that are just, um, I don't know, it actually makes me want to notice more and to actually journal more and to take note of those little things that kind of pop into my head, but then kind of go somewhere. So even though I'm not writing a novel necessarily, there's these little moments that it feels like you you live your life with so much intention and, and thought, it's really lovely. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, I think that that's like, a, a, it's just like a thing I like to do, but B, it's like what a writer's job is, you know, is to like, like notice, notice things. Everything. Yeah, it's like to really notice things and notice how they feel and notice the details and then to be able to like basically relay those things in, in written form. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I, I, I recently interviewed um, Robin Sloan, uh, who's a novelist for, for Super Organizers, and, and he has like a way more advanced setup than I do. Like we went through his notes and like it's all just like these little things. And what he says is like uh, it's these it's these little moments or these little details that are ineffable. Like you can't describe exactly like what makes them so compelling to him, but like they are all around a certain type of thing. And he just keeps them there so that when he's writing, he can like pull them out and yeah, it, it, it's just like, um, it's, a, it's a cool way to live, you know? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, it's very inspiring. Um, oh, uh, I think we covered this. I'm not seeing much use of properties or tags. Is that just not useful or deliberate omission? I think we sort of covered that, that you just felt it was like overkill. Um, you're more of like a free form, you know, style. My My general philosophy on this type of thing is like, um, 
the organizing should be in service of the work. And so uh, I generally try to do like the minimum I can uh, to like make sure that I'm set up to do the work. So it's like I, you know, I'm, I'm recording stuff and I'm organizing it. I'm organizing it a, a little bit, but I, I want to spend generally the majority of my time on the uh, writing itself and not the planning, the writing. <laughs> exactly. Um, and and what I find is often when I when I build like a really complicated system beforehand, and I do that too because I'm super nerdy about this stuff. Like I love it. It's this is like this has been like a this is a lesson that I've learned over time. When I go and build like a super complicated system first before I do the work, I end up like often like not using the system because it it isn't like super integrated in my workflow. Um, and instead, what I what I'll do is I will like. I'll do the minimum thing. It's like, oh, I need to keep track of characters. I'll just like make, make a couple pages with characters and just throw a bunch of stuff in there. And then uh, like as more problems come up with my work, I will then like add more to the system, but I only do it in service of like, uh, uh, of like problems that come up when I'm doing my work, not beforehand. And what that means is like I'm building a system that kind of like fits me like a glove. It's like, it's it's built specifically in the outline of my, my workflow rather than me projecting forward before I do the work, like what my workflow is gonna be and what I'm gonna need. Totally, and I think a lot of people when they're just starting to get used to uh, Notion too, there's that tendency to want it to be like the super advanced version that kind of does everything. Um, and people are afraid to get it wrong and, they, and they're kind of thinking 10 steps ahead, but my space didn't look the way it does now. When I first started, it was like, oh, I actually don't have a way to do my weekly agenda or I don't have a way, like there's friction here, there's friction here and you layer in over time and I think uh, you kind of have to jump in. You kind of have to get your hands dirty before the system kind of becomes built for you. And sometimes that means stripping things back and being like, you know what, I just need a place for quick dumping my notes. And that's what works, right? So uh, I totally hear you on like it being just enough for to activate you in doing the work and not spending time organizing your, your thoughts. Cool. Uh, uh, Gray asked, do you share segments with beta readers? Uh, I do, yeah. Um, so I just have a group of friends and this coach, obviously, that I, I will send stuff to and they will give me mostly supportive notes. Um, and uh, yeah, again, that's been really great. Just like breaking the seal on feedback and making writing this into a little bit more of a conversation with the world instead of like mm, me being okay. kind of like the, the mad scientist, like in like hold up in my lab, like doing making this like thing that has to be perfect or whatever. Like it, it's really easy to get super precious about your writing. And I think that's the point where it like, it doesn't work because you like, you're almost too afraid to even share it. Um, and, uh, and like, that's not the point of writing stuff. Uh, <laughs> the point of writing stuff almost always is to like share it with other people. And um, the more you can do that in like low stakes way, the easier it is to like, um, to do it in higher stakes way, like publishing or putting it online or whatever. Um, and also the better your writing is going to be because, uh, uh, usually when you're writing, like you're, you're writing because you want people to feel something or you want people to feel less alone or you want to, people to learn something and you don't, you're not going to know if that happens for people, unless you've created a feedback loop where people are reading and you're, you get, you start to know what works and what doesn't. Just like in product design, right? I'm sure you're like startup and, and, uh, sort of product background. It's, it's all the same, right? You're like, what's the point? Uh. I'm curious how that's maybe influenced the way you think about your writing. It must surely all be kind of connected. It's a, it's a fascinating question. Um, I think that there's a, there's a difference between making a product and writing a book because making a product, you are, um, your job is to make something that other people want. Um, and it only works if you like figure out what people want and give it to them. Um, and with a book, depends on what kind of book, but like with, especially the kind of book I'm writing, you're really just thinking about what you want. Like mm -hmm. what, what kind of like makes sense to you and like what is, what, what do you feel, right? And the, and the idea is like if I do something that makes me feel great, then like other people will like it too. But like I, and, and, and I do want other people to like it, but I can't like use them as like the primary barometer of whether I'm doing a good job. Um, I have to like, think about like my taste and like how I feel and, and make something that like reflects something that's like really, really true to me. And the question is, is not whether other people like it is whether like 
the truth that I'm trying to tell like comes through to other people and that's what I want to measure. Like, are they, do they get it? Are they, are they kind of compelled by it? Um, and, uh, but, but ultimately it's coming, coming to me. So there's, yeah, there's a little bit of a difference there, but I think that the similarities between like building products and writing a book like this is like, it's, it's, it's a similar in the sense that like, there's a kind of universal method for like getting good at something and, and making something and putting something out into the world, which is like, um, uh, do it badly a lot first. Yes. Uh, and like, don't measure it. Like don't measure your own progress and don't like, don't judge yourself. And like, literally just like, you want to, you want to write a book, write a thousand words a day and just like, just do it for a while. Um, you want to build a product, like, you know, make a bad product, like spend a couple, spend several hours like, making the worst possible to do list app or whatever it is that you want to build. <laughs> Um, and give yourself the information to do that, and then only once you've like built up, built enough like um, expertise and enough experience, do you like start to measure and say like, okay, like I got to make this better. Everybody needs the shitty first drafts, right? Nobody gets to skip that. <laughs> Unfortunately. Uh Lola, Lola asked a question too that I think uh, it would be great to hear from other folks in the chat too, but uh, if you're writing or have written a novel, do you generally start with the plot idea or the character or something else? I'm sure that's a little bit different on a per writer basis. I'd love to hear from folks in the sidebar if you're working on a novel, but um, Dan, for you, is it like idea based? Was it like a kernel? Like what is it that, and does that depend per on a per novel basis? There is no rule. You can do whatever. <laughs> Start with whatever you're excited about. For me, I had like this particular idea, which is like not at all what I'm writing about now, but the, the motivating idea for me was like, um, I think that there's this kind of, uh, there is this feeling about how entrepreneurship works that um, typically like a person will get an idea and they will, um, you know, this, this idea will like fit with them like absolutely perfectly and they'll, they'll kind of just know that this is like the thing, this is the right thing for them and then they will go start the company and then like uh, things just kind of like work and, and, and everything fall great. into place yeah. and everything's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and like, and the reality, at least the reality of my experience is that um, it, it's very uncertain and, and everything feels like it's, it sucks and is not going to work for a really, really long time. Um, and then, uh, when it does work, like in retrospect, you can like look back and be like, this is why it worked. And like, this is all, mm -hmm. these are all things that made sense about it. Um, but like, while you're going through it, like it just feels terrible and it doesn't think it doesn't feel like it's going to work. Um, and I really wanted to write something that like reflected that reality. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's where I started. I am not doing that anymore. Really? There's like, there's, there's like little pieces. There's like little fragments of the book that that um that are like that but um they're not the uh they're not like the main thing anymore um but just start with something and you'll end up somewhere good i love that um uh, seems a shame to go down to like <laughs> technical <laughs> questions now i'm like oh i love the i love this stuff um do you use markdown frequently when you're writing or taking notes not really. I mean, I use, I, I, I've been using Rome a little bit and Rome, I guess is like marked down ish. Um, uh, but no, not really. Um, how do you share the novel with other proofreaders? Do you export to? Yeah. Yeah. I just like, I export it to like a PDF and just send it to them. Um, what's your, fir uh, your first process of plotting? Do you free write or do you start with a character or a vague idea? I think we, we sort of covered that. Um, you kind of had one intention and then it just sort of went in a, in another direction. And what's your editing process? I'm at my second drafts edit and I don't like editing. Haha. <laughs> um, how do you keep yourself motivated to keep going? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I basically, um, I flipped when I first started to do editing, I like flipped from edit, like writing and writing a couple, right, writing, trying to write a thousand words a day to writing a certain, to, to editing a certain number of scenes a day, um, mm. or, uh, uh, editing for a certain number of hours per day. Um, and I think either one of those will work, um, which is just like, okay, 
blocking off, I'll maybe spend two hours a day on this and in two hours I can get through a certain number of pages and I have X number of pages. So that means it'll take me X, Y number of days to get through the whole editing process. Mm. Mm. But I've also like had other people look at it and I've, I've hired an editor to like, you know, help me with it and help, uh, help me find blind spots and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think an editing process is really, um, there are lots of different phases to editing and it's really important to know what phase you're in. So uh, the first phase of editing is always like higher level structural stuff. Like what's working with this, what's not, um, where, where do things get lost? Where are you, um, where are you bored? What doesn't make sense? Like what needs to be rearranged? Like all that kind of stuff. So you, you work on that stuff first. Uh, and then once you, once that stuff is feels like it's pretty well set, only then are you going to go in and like start tweaking language um and really doing like copy editing and stuff like that uh so uh important to to note that too mm, so it sounds like yeah there'd almost be like <laughs> several layers of editing and probably several uh multiple phases of that um and i guess you know the follow-up question was how do you keep yourself motivated to keep going i'm curious if you uh incentivize yourself or you know maybe a way to track progress that you're like yes i'm like part of the way there or something like that <laughs> A uh, great question. That's weird. Um, when I started doing this, I wasn't doing anything else. So in order to like not hate myself, like I had to do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so that, that was one thing. Like there's just a lot of like personal pride involved. Um, and I've, I have, I guess over time, like drilled into myself that I'm the kind of person that like when I say I'm going to do something, I just do it. Um, and so, and that's not, I haven't always been like that. That's something that I've like, I guess, developed over time. Um, so there's that, which is just like a desire to like really set a goal and like not stop until you hit it. Um, and then I think over time, like it just became like really important to me. Like this is really important to me. I care a lot about it. Um, it's part of your body of work, right? Yeah. Like, I, I really think, even if it's not, even if no one reads it, I mean, I would like people to read it, but, like, it's really just important to me to, like, get this done. It's, uh, and so it's not something that I feel like is going to fall by the wayside. For, for it's, it would be like letting a, letting a friend die or something, you know. I, I, I just, do just can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's a helpful answer, but um, that's that is how I feel. Um, the, I, I think that um, if I was going to give advice to someone that, is struggling with with motivation it's my advice is more like not how do you stay motivated it's like how do you um how do you deal with feelings of demotivation like how do you get rid of those moments um where you're feeling really demotivated and you want to give up and that's a very mm -hmm. like it's a very personal kind of like psychological thing um it's like what are the things that that make you want to give up like for some people it's this like perfectionistic tendency which is like They've set this like, <laughs> yeah. They've set this like monumental goal, and um, and so they uh, uh, they really want everything to like match up to the goal. And if it doesn't, it like really just like they get really frustrated. So there's this um there's this book called The Plague by Camus, um, which is about a pandemic. Uh, funny enough, uh, <laughs> how appropriate. And, yeah, and one of the characters in that book, um, he's he's writing a novel. And he's been writing it for like 10 years and, and he um, he just is continually revising the first sentence and he's never gotten past the first sentence. Wow. Um, and so like some some people are like that where it's just like every, everything has to be perfect. And so I only do like the one the first sentence and then I kind of give up. And so if you're like that, then the then the um, the, uh, the the thing to do is to is to like is to lower the stakes and is to um, tell yourself this can be bad. And like, mm. uh, figure out like what you can tell yourself to like to 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 make that okay. Like, I won't release it, or like, uh, you know, any anything like that. Um, or maybe it's like you, you think it has to be this grand, epic, sweeping story. Maybe you should just tell yourself, I'm just gonna write like a like a one page short story first. You know, um, so like figuring out how to lower the stakes to allow yourself to like get through the the periods of demotivation. I think is like is really important. Mm. Uh, but there are lots of other reasons that people don't do stuff. Um, so it's really, um, it's really a, a question of like, what are the, what are those things for you and, and how do you deal with them? 
I think there was a, also a super organizers post kind of recently that touched upon this a little bit, wasn't there? Like near IL with like procrastination and how we're like trying to avoid feelings of discomfort and. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, this this interview I did with Nir Eyal, who's a, an author of two books, one's called Hooked and the other is called Indistractable. And Indistractable is, is basically about, or one, one of the things we focus on in the interviews is, is a lot of people, me included, and especially people that care a lot about productivity, like we're, we're always like trying to like get into flow or form a habit. Um, and, and what Nir says is like, often that is uh, code for, I want this hard thing to be easy. Um, yeah. and, uh, and, and really doing great work um, means that uh, you, you actually like, like work is going to be hard sometimes and you have to actually just learn how to deal with the difficult emotions that come up when you're doing your work. And if you can't do that, then all the other kind of like life hacks and stuff like uh, don't, like aren't gonna be helpful. You have to accept the fact that, that it's hard and then and then and then work through it and when you don't do that a lot of people basically like have this have these feelings of like guilt and shame that it's not easy and those are the things that like end up right. you from doing stuff um and if you just reframe that and it's just expect it to be hard and then learn how to deal with the hard stuff then it gets it gets easier to get through so much inner work like danny was saying work out why you've lost motivation burnout or boredom right like there's obviously some um it's the inner work that we got to do. Like, why Like, why are we even doing this project in the first place? You kind of have to know why and what's at stake. And yeah, that's interesting. Um, there was a, a question that popped up in the chat by David. Um, how do you integrate Notion with other software that you might be using like Scrivener and that sort of, or like, I think you said you weren't using Scrivener, but in terms of actually doing the, translating it from the ideas and the plot and the pieces into the actual writing, like what are the other tools that are part of your, your whole ecosystem. It's a good question. I, I pretty simple. Like I, I have the notion, and the notion is like my central command center for like um, both details and background on characters, and then also uh, like where I'm going with the plot and stuff like that. And then the rest of it is just in Google Docs, and it's like literally just a, a list of chapters. Each uh, uh, each chapter is a is a is a doc. Um, and I just like open up the Google Doc and I just start writing. <laughs> cool. um, it's not particularly advanced. Um, doesn't but, need like to I be, said, right? <laughs> yeah, like, but I don't think it, it, it doesn't necessarily need to be. Um, it, it should be advanced to the extent that it needs to be advanced. And for this, it's just like a, I just have to get words on the page. Love it. Uh, Lola asked a great question. I, I love this. How do you create conflict in your story? I'm a conflict avoider in reality, so I noticed I have trouble creating it in my story. That's a really awesome question. I feel that so deeply. Uh, <laughs> I'm that's so really like funny. that. Like with, the, with my characters, like I, I will like often, like there's often these, there's these times where like I want them to avoid something because I know it's going to be hard for them. And like, and so I'm like, unconsciously like writing them away from the thing that like they that that is difficult they need to face <laughs> that's the worst thing to do um and uh so that was that's only been a thing that i've like learned how to do like more recently and i think when you like when you start to really watch movies and tv shows and read books from a um like a writing like a writer perspective you start to realize how like most of what we like and think is interesting and compels us about plots is like literally the main character just being like tortured and <laughs> it's so true and and like tortured in a way that is like completely and totally perfect for what they need to learn um yeah yeah and um uh uh like for example uh finding nemo right everyone's seen finding nemo like the dad is like super overprotective and he's overprotective because uh, I think I feel like he like lost his he lost his wife. And so he doesn't want like the his son to like do any spoilers. No. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, that happens in the first scene. So like yeah. <laughs> but doesn't want anything to happen to his son. And yeah. so like the second scene in the movie, the worst thing that could possibly happen to him is his son is taken away. Um, and uh, and and every other movie is like that, too. So I think. Um, if you're conflict avoidant, like just learning to like, learning how good it feels to like see characters being tortured by like watching other stuff. And then like, like just learning to, en to enjoy <laughs> doing that, doing that is, it could be like, a, it's, it's, it could be like a different, um, 
uh, a different way to appreciate conflict, I guess, because you get to like have all those, you get to do all those things in fiction without any of the consequences. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I don't know, I, I've learned what? to like have fun with it, even though before I didn't like it. I like the way you, you phrased that. It was um, almost like, what does my character need to learn? Yeah. I like that. Um, <laughs> yeah, Teresa said, for me, it's the other way around. I send my characters through all the conflict that I avoid in real life. <laughs> Love that. Um, Galet asked, I'm the caregiver for my mom who sadly suffers from cancer for the second time. And I see that my editing is always after my, after my mom are home and when I can to my editing, when I can do my editing, I feel too exhausted, so I'm feeling unmotivated in most cases. My question is, how do you manage your time while writing when life gets in the way? Oh, first of all, I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, and uh, I, can't, I can't imagine what that's like, but um, I think sometimes it's just really, it's just really, really hard, you know? Um, for me, like, I, I'm, not, I'm not a caregiver, but I'm also running this newsletter um, and that takes up like, 110% of my time and so on Saturdays like when I'm writing like when I've already written 5,000 words in a week like the last thing that I want to do is like go write more generally um, yes. so the thing that, that I do that's been very helpful for me is I just have a group of people that I write with um, and we meet every Saturday and all of us are working on some of us are working on all of us are working on other writing projects and um we uh, we basically hold each other accountable. So often when, when you're in that place and you're demotivated and uh, you're just burned out, um, well, the first thing to do is like take care of yourself. And like sometimes like life just means that some of those things like have to take a back seat for a little while. Um, but if you do feel like there's room for that in your life and you can, um, having a group of people that you are, are like mutually support each other in achieving something like this can be really, really helpful to keep you on track. I love that. Yeah, simple, simple suggestion. But um, sometimes even going back to like, what's life giving for you? And like, I have a list like that in, in Notion, maybe you do too. It's like, what are the things that give me energy or make me happy? And it might be that at this phase, writing actually is taking more energy than it's giving you. So maybe there's a different way you can kind of bring back some of that energy for yourself. Like for me, I have a, a slot in my calendar called brain time. And it's like, you know, Saturday and Sunday mornings is just time for me to like read, drink my coffee, chill, talk to my plants, whatever I gotta do to like get some energy back. And so maybe there's there's some ritual around that of like um, when you know that you're really tired, what can you do that's really sort of life-giving and supportive for you? Uh, I don't know if you have anything like like that, Dan, or do you, do you just kind of power through the writing or is it like, actually, no, I know I need to reset and do something a little bit different right now. That's a really good question. I mean, for me, it's like um, talking with friends in like a deep way usually helps me taking walks um uh like sometimes it's working out um and often it's like reading or playing guitar something like that yeah, yeah. Um, but sometimes it's like literally just taking a break i don't take a lot of break <laughs> breaks but like just just like waking up late on a saturday and like not putting any pressure on myself because what i find is that often it's this feeling that i have to do something that makes me demotivated um and when i can like just allow myself the space to relax and then choose again to do the thing that uh, I get motivated again when I feel it's like a choice. Um, yeah. Cool for me. I love that. That's awesome. Um, I, we powered through the questions. So I don't know if anyone else has any other questions around that or um, I don't know, Dan, if there's anything else that you want to share about like, like what you're most looking forward to or like what's the next phase in your book like when is it gonna ship i don't know <laughs> tell me more about what you're thinking about i'm in the middle of that too um and i'm pretty psyched about it i think it's the best writing i've ever done um wow. but uh uh but it's like in the context of like writing and growing this other newsletter so i'm honestly to be 100 percent honest like i'm just stretched a little thin um and figuring out how to like balance my duties there with my duties to this book. So um, that is a thing that I'm currently sitting with and trying to figure out what to do. Um, yeah. But, and I don't have a ship date, but I, I do want to like have another version of Act Two done by like probably the end of the summer. Um, cool. So that's the next thing. Um, yeah. 
How much of your time, like I'm super curious about how you balance all this stuff because I feel like you do so much with the super organizer stuff. There's just like so much content that you're putting out. Um, and I know you're tapping into like other guests and, and such too and doing these bundles, but like you're a prolific content creator. I'm just so curious. I know you said you're tapped in and like that takes up 110%, but I'd love to know like what is what is your time actually look like throughout a week um, to produce this content for super organizers? How do you like, how do you do it? Where's your time, where's your time being spent? It's a good question. Um, I I have two blocks during the week where I do most of my writing on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I try not to like do any um, uh, any uh, calls or calls or anything like on like at, at those times. Um, and then I like sneak in writing sessions when I can, like in the morning or at night, like when I'm not doing meetings or anything like that. Um, but I end up you know, I write uh, at least one 3,000 word interview a week, and then I write two or three like 500 word like pieces for members a week, and then I do I write this book. So it's like, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm uh, I just I work a lot, and uh, the pandemic has been, I guess, good for my productivity because there's nothing <laughs> to do. Um, I hear that. Yeah. I don't think it, I don't. I honestly don't really have any secrets other than like. Uh, I make I, I make time for it, uh, where I don't where I have like like long blocks of of time. Um, I uh, uh, I work a lot, and uh, I really like it. Uh, and that's yeah. helpful. I've also I'm also like I, I'm generally like pretty quick. Like, because um, you've written whatever. like a hundred thousand shitty first drafts, right? You yeah. like, got yeah. them all. Out. <laughs> yeah, like like a three thousand word super organizers piece takes me a day generally to do. Um, and I, sorry, it would not have taken me a day <laughs> when I first started. Um, but now it, it generally does. Cause I kind of, I just kind of know how it, how it goes. You've done, yeah. how, I mean, how many have you done so far? I probably, so I've conducted maybe like 50 or 60 interviews and I've released maybe like 20 to 30. Wow. Cool. Yeah. They're like, yeah, pretty, they're <laughs> pretty in depth. Um, yeah. A couple more questions popped in. Do you use an inspiration board on Notion? I love the gallery option on Notion and I love using it as an inspiration board for my characters and places in my book. I, mean, I saw that you didn't really use any, any databases there, but do you have like, I mean, your space kind of feels like a bit of an inspiration Thanks. place. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, tr I try to make it, you know, I have like my the tiara and a uh, little Etch-a-Sketch and I have a bunch of other like, little bits of flair here um i uh i don't have i don't have like a gallery view or anything in notion i do have a notion um basically when i was my mom moved out of my childhood home maybe like a couple a couple years ago maybe two years ago a year and a half ago and um i just found all this stuff from my childhood when uh when she moved um like lego sets and like capes um like i have like grab it like <laughs> that's awesome. uh, things you forgot that made up your yeah, childhood. Like I have this like I have this like Obi-Wan Kenobi cape that I like loved when I was a kid. Um and like I'll like wear this sometimes. But like I basically like took um I just took uh pictures of all that stuff and like put it into like a big mood board. Uh, oh. you know, these like Star Wars books and like Lego sets and like all and like these can this like, connects roller coaster I had and sometimes I like refer to that as like a um uh as a way to like kind of get me into the mood that I, I like to write from. I, lo I love the idea of like the motivation, like I'm putting on my writing cape now, here I go. <laughs> it's great, it like puts, it like you can't help feel like a kid if you're wearing a cape. So <laughs> I, I, love I, that. Often, I often do that. <laughs> so good. Um, Damon asked, I have a question not related to writing, but rather using Notion for template projects and a master task database, hoping you'll be able to answer the questions after you guys wrap up. Um, I'm not sure if, I mean, I feel like uh, there's a lot of other sessions we've done that cover a little bit more of the master task database in more detail and templating projects. So I feel like we should probably cover that in a separate office hours, um, Damon. And so you also might wanna look at some of the past, um, let's see if I can find a link to, there was a task, uh, master task database office hours that we did. Maybe I'll try and drop the link in the chat. Uh, because I feel like that could be like a much longer conversation. Uh, okay, last question: music to write to. Um, I do a couple different things. Uh, there's this uh, app I use called Focus at Will, uh, which just like does like 
ambient focus music, which I think is pretty good. Um, I've also been using this app called Centered, which also does music. And it's like a, it's a combination of like a to-do list and um, like a a focus timer thing. So like you, you will say, uh, you know, I want to write for 30 minutes and then it will like uh, uh, start playing music for you and uh, make sure that you're on task, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, I just wrote about that for super organizers. Um, and other than that, I really like, um, like kind of like folk music type stuff, like just people like with a guitar, generally like a one person with a guitar is like generally my, my vibe. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Um, but yeah, it's called centered. The app's called centered. Centered. Okay, cool. Centered and focus out. Well, I I mean, certainly it seems like a lot more apps are popping up. Like I think brain.fm and there seems to be a lot of apps around the sort of forest for focus as well. I mean, you probably see all sorts of them because you're chatting with people about productivity all the time. Yeah. I will drop a link to centered into the, into the chat so people can see it cool um yeah well, i mean i know we're sort of at the at the top of the hour and so uh i really loved getting a glimpse inside your process and just seeing how thoughtful you are and, and the way you i don't know like i'm already rethinking or just sort of um thinking about how i might journal with a little bit more intention because uh, even though i'm not writing a novel like maybe one day that'll be something on my on my bucket list so it was just really nice awesome. to see your process and and the way you think about the world and uh yeah i really thank appreciate you. you sharing it with us um, thank you so Brian. definitely definitely check out super organizers those of you um, if you enjoyed this session like dan does some really seriously in-depth interviews with folks um over there and uh, i think i just recently purchased the bundle it's like the everything bundle right where you've got a couple bundle. different <laughs> a couple different yeah really awesome folks on there. Um, Nathan, what's his last name? Bashes. Bashes. Um, yeah. yeah, I just, I love both of your your content. So you've got a Thank couple you. bundles there. Um, yes, Toran, I will, <laughs> I can journal, I can journal a novel. Yeah, hey, I need to put a little bit more intention into my, into my daily journaling. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much, Dan. I really appreciate it. Thank you for coming on. Yeah. Um, and if there's anything else that you want to like send people to, whether it's like Twitter or I don't know what the best place to engage with you is. Check out Super Organizers. I also have a Twitter. It's just I'm at Dan Chipper on Twitter. Happy to talk to you there as well. Awesome. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. thanks everyone for coming and have a wonderful weekend. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Dan.